In this lesson, we're going to go over the clipping menu. You can access it by holding Control and Shift. As you can see, it replaces your brush palette and gives you a few new toys to play with. You've got Clip Circle, Clip Circle Center, Clip Curve, Clip Rectangle, Select Lasso, Select Rectangle, and Slice Curve. Now, these can actually be busted down into about three separate categories. Pretty much anything with the word clip in it will mash the rest of your geometry down into your selection radius. Then you've got Select Lasso and Select Rectangle, which allow you to highlight faces for either polypaint or to turn into subgroups. And actually, if you just want to go ahead and group anything that you select, you can use Slice Curve. Pretty much whenever you select one of these, it's going to throw this little thing up that says, hey, you can't use this brush unless you hold Control and Shift. So you just go ahead and press OK. And uh, as you can see, you've got uh, whichever brush you were using there, and uh, there's no special clip brush. But if you hold down Control and Shift, there it is. OK, so let's go ahead and see what this thing does. Now at first glance, you would think, oh, OK, so it pretty much deleted whatever was outside of our selection radius. But uh, no, that's actually not what it does. Uh, upon closer inspection, you can see that it, wherever you selected, it tried to mash the entire rest of your mesh into that area. So it's really, really good for cleaning up your mesh for like hard surfaces, but it's also got something else that's kind of really cool. Uh, check this out. Whoops. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, so <laughs> turn on radial symmetry and drag some of this out using the move brush. And uh, now this time, hold down Control and Spacebar, and you'll get a new submenu. Now you've got uh, B Radius, Polygroup, and something called Unclip. Now what this does is it pretty much unclips whatever geometry, or it undoes your last clipping uh, brush, but applies whatever changes you did to that last brush to what it actually used to look like. It's really complicated, but uh, basically it's an undo button that skips a step. Check it out. Oops. As you can see, uh, <laughs> it gave me back my sphere, but it kept my stretched faces. So uh, it gave me kind of like a star warrior and uh, probably like create a little window and like maybe you know, uh, turn, <laughs> turn that into a window or something, put some landing gear on here, maybe a DBZ character inside, who knows. But uh, it's it's really interesting uh, to play around with the, the clipping brushes like that. Uh, let's see here, there's also clip uh, circle center. Now this, oops, let's turn off symmetry here. Now this basically is pretty much the same as the other circle, except that it creates a circle from wherever you drag from. If you want to move these selections around, just hold spacebar, let go, and you can resize again, hold spacebar, and you can keep going back into it. It does the same thing as the other circle does, though. Then you've got Clip Curve. Now this one doesn't do the same thing. So with Clip Curve, you have a gradient line. And uh, if you press Alt once while using this, it'll create a curve, a nice smooth curve. If you double tap Alt, it gives you a hard line. Now you're going to want to keep the uh, selection area with the gradient always facing inward, or at least in one uh, one specific direction, because as soon as you twist the gradient around, like try to do something like that, it gets confused and isn't exactly sure what you're trying to do and can you know really screw up your geometry. So try to always keep that gradient facing the same direction. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the clip rectangle, which is identical. Uh, there you go. Now, actually, I'll go backwards one. Um, you've got the clip curve. Let's go back to that. The clip curve, actually, if you noticed, doesn't do what the other clip brushes does in the fact that it actually, uh, anything inside of your selection radius is what gets mashed into the rest of your geometry. If you remember right, the other selection brushes, whatever was inside of your radius, whatever you selected, the rest of the, ma the, rest of the mesh was shoved into. But when you use the clip curve, it's the opposite. So whatever you select is what it gets rid of. So again, really good for uh, use for cleaning up geometry. All right, uh, let's see here. Then we're going to move on to uh, the selection. 
So uh, it's it's kind of cool. It allows you to select faces, and uh, you can group them, you can poly paint them, you can do whatever you need to do to them. But it selects faces. Uh, it's much better than doing this and going, oh, I think I got everything. Uh, just whip this thing out, paint whatever design you want, copy it through, uh, maybe even extract this and turn it into like uh, some armor plating. Who knows? Let's see here. Then there's the rectangle. It does the same thing, except it's a square instead of, as you can see, it's a square instead of a lasso. Now sliced curve. <laughs> This one is another line with a gradient, and again, if you tap Alt once, it goes into a standard uh, curve, but if you double tap Alt, it goes into a hard uh, angled line. Now it doesn't look like it actually did anything, but actually if you go to polygroups, or polyfaces, you can see that it separated them. Wh uh, whatever is inside of your selection radius, it turns into a group. It separates from your original. Now, if you're in Dynamesh and you hold and you press the group button and then go ahead and re-Dynamesh, it'll separate them. So, again, another really cool tool for hard surfaces, robots, and everything else. So, anyway, okay. So we've already covered the clipping brushes and uh, how you can clip and unclip, how you can mess the geometry that way, the selection, and uh, the slice curve. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions on this one, this one can be quite complicated sometimes. Make sure to leave a comment down below, just in case. Uh, I will be doing uh, probably a practical application using this stuff later.